What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phase 6, your source for music, business, motivation, and support. It's your boy, Sir Love, and I'm excited again to give you guys another topic. We're still talking about management. Had a lot of interest in management, so I'm going to keep talking about management and give you guys the game from that standpoint. Now, in this particular video, I'm lighting it up a little bit. I'm making it a little bit more fun. I'm giving you guys some homework because I think that if you guys were to absorb the information from these different films, it will make you better managers. And if you're an artist trying to find a manager, it'll make you better equipped to understanding what you're looking for because you can get a physical representation of it. You guys need to find these movies and you need to watch these movies. If you're serious about being a manager, if you're serious about being an artist and you need a manager, or you wanna understand what your manager should be doing in your career, these are the movies to watch, and I'm gonna tell you why and what to watch for. I'm not just gonna give you a list. There's a list in the description. I'm gonna tell you why you should watch these movies and what to pay attention to, and I'll probably go back later and like do a breakdown of each movie, but for right now, I'm just gonna tell you about these movies. These are my top six. Since this is phase six, I'm gonna give you my top six, and so uh, that was a long intro. Let's jump into it, phase six. Now, like I said, these are my top six. There are a lot of different movies on the music business. What I decided to do, how I made my selection process is one, I didn't want to pick any documentaries. I love music documentaries. I suggest you guys watch music documentaries. I am a student of the game, so I love finding out all the intricacies. Now, we're not talking about documentaries. We're also not going to talk about television series, even though there are some good music television series. I want to limit it to movies, something that you can watch, you know, two, two hours, three hours or less or something like that, that highlights the business, not just a great music movie, but a great music movie that highlights the business. And these are the ones that I like in the order that I think are the top six from the perspective of a manager, which is the perspective of someone that's trying to get in the game from the bottom up that has nothing, no resources and trying to build it themselves. That is a perspective that I'm giving you that I'm basing this off of. So number six, Number six is going to be Cadillac Records. Oh my gosh, Cadillac Records was a great film. Very underrated, very underrated film. I know Parkwood uh, Entertainment, that's Beyonce's company, uh, put this film together. And, you know, it was one of their, I think it was their first film, second film was one, I think it was their first film actually. And so, you know, very huge project, very big, taking on Chess Records, which was a legendary blues company, a real company. Um, and, and just a very great depiction of what they did. Now, what I like about it from a management standpoint is if you look at Chess uh, and you look at how he started with artist Muddy Waters, he was on the road with Muddy. He was in the dirt with Muddy. He was trying to get everything started with Muddy. He's in the clubs with Muddy. He's pressing up Muddy's records. He's trying to figure out the process. I think that paying attention to the relationship between Chess and Muddy Waters is a perfect example of how management works. You know, during that time period, like anytime you have a small record company, you know, the, the record executives are pretty much the manager. They're doing so much. They're involved with the recording process. They're involved with the distribution. They're involved on the road. They're involved um, with the booking process. Like they're involved. So even though he was not a manager per se, he did take on a lot of manager responsibilities and the business aspects that I like to pay attention to was how royalties were being managed. There was an altercation between uh, Muddy Waters and Wolf toward the end when one of the other members died and they were trying to figure out who was going to pay for it. And Wolf was always saying, hey, I'm not going to be a slave. I'm not going to, you know, take any, any handouts from anyone. I own all my stuff. You know, I don't need to beg for nothing because he's not tricking off with his royalties. Whereas Muddy didn't have the same mentality. And, you know, he spent a lot of time in poverty and, you know, taking all these cars and those cars are, are recoupable. Those cars are recoupable and coming out of, you know, these artists' advances in their royalties. So even watching how Chess move royalties from one artist to the next just to look out for them, like paying attention to the nuances in the business. I think that was a great movie to understand management, the artist-manager relationship, how crazy it can get from even, you know, them, you know, being in a hotel and Muddy wanting to smash women and the manager like, uh, and like the whole thing, like this is real talk, this is real life. These are real situations, real stuff you're gonna go through. And I think that it's a great uh, depiction. So for a manager, a person trying to get in, number six on my top six is gonna be Cadillac Records. Number five, number five in my top six 
movies, films that you can watch to be a better manager is going to be Selena. Selena is amazing, man. It's a great story. It's a tragic story. If you know anything about Selena, a historic uh, Hispanic singer, beautiful. She was supposed to be right there competing against Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, and Tony Braxton. She was in that time period. She was, she was, she was just amazing. She was huge. Going to be an international artist, I guess. The closest thing we can have to what Selena would have been is Rihanna today. Um, and, you know, even though it's not, you know, Mexican or, you know, Hispanic in, in nature, but, you know, she's Caribbean. She has an international following people in the Caribbean. She's looked at it as the highest. It's the same kind of concept, right? Um, something that you can watch and learn from as a manager is Selena's father, the relationship between Selena's father and his daughter. One thing to notice about Selena's father is that he was trying to be an artist himself. So what does that mean? He was able to look at all of his mistakes and make sure Selena did not make the same mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes that he mentions that he vocalizes in the movie is that he didn't understand or didn't sing, you know, Spanish music. He was doing all this American music and Spanish and the, the true Hispanic, you know, people of the culture were saying, nah, you're going to have to sing our culture too. You're Hispanic. And if you want Mexico's love, you better sing Mexican songs. And he had to learn that the hard way. And when it was time for him to manage Selena, he made sure that she knew how to sing in Spanish as well as in English. Now that comes, now that's just one nuance that he showcases in the film. And it's not that many that they showcase honestly when it comes to historic lessons that he learned and how he flipped them but there are quite a few now I talk about the importance of having experience and how that experience can be helpful in the future but this is a perfect example because he made the mistake she didn't have to make the mistake and that's the beauty of having someone that knows the game outside of just that pay attention to how they built up their following they built up an organic huge following touring on the road going from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place getting better and better with the outfits better and better with the music better and better with the stage booking bigger and bigger shows doing the songs that people love sneaking in their own songs they're doing covers and doing their own records and building and building and building being the best at every single event making sure when they leave people know her name this is selena this is selena this is selena and because of that they built a huge cult following that was just expanding all over the place. Word of mouth picked up. It got crazy. And toward the end of the movie, you see her performing in front of these huge audiences. This is true guerrilla marketing, working yourself from the bottom to the top, strictly from touring. I mean, look what he had to sacrifice. This man gave up businesses. He gave up careers. He was on the road in a bus traveling. That was his life. He gave his life to it. It's an example of, of, of management for you guys. Number five, Selena. You gotta give that man credit, man. Another dynamic to watch in that movie is love. We talked about sex and the power that love can play and how it can do different things. You know, I know I didn't wanna talk about it too much. I'm gonna talk about it more in the info pack in, in the private power series, but eh, these things, you're gonna see sex and love prevalent through any music film that you watch because it is important in the game there's a whole bunch of other things to watch but number five that's selena number four it's going to be very similar to cadillac records but i think it's a little bit more in depth it's actually a lot a bit more in depth i would go with dream girls dream girls watching jamie fox's character take that company from nothing to something starting from the bottom building with them and working their way to the top what an incredible story. I mean, he started, before he was the major record label owner at the end of the film, he really started off as a managerial type figure, trying to figure out how to make things happen. So he had to figure out how to get the money. Remember, I talked about knowledge, network, money. He's out there getting the money, selling those cars, flipping the cars, turn the car dealership into a studio, turn around, took the cars, uh, the, the money from the cars, use it to pay the DJs to play the records, and this, down the third, like all that is the music business. That's how the business works to this day. You go to clubs, you're paying DJs to play a record, or you're networking, building a relationship so the DJ can play your record. You're talking to an independent radio programmer so the independent radio program programmer can go pay the radio people so the radio people can play your record. You're doing this, you're doing that. Like that movie 
really took you through, like from stepping to the bad side was when he was going corporate. He was really trying to build it. Everything before the stepping to the bad side record was like the organic building the relationship with the artist, trying to figure out their aesthetic. Who should be the lead singer? Who should stand where? How do I manage the group? How do I deal with egos? How, oh, you're a great writer. I need to build my team. I need a writer. I need this, I need that, I need that. We need to bring it, build the team together. Let's make a company. Let's make this big. He had the vision. He was thinking like a CEO, even though they were small. All the things that I've been talking about, this showcase in that movie like I'm, I'm I'm I love the fact that I shot all these things tonight so that I can connect the dots even while I'm telling you guys this story there are so many things that made him a great manager as he was building that company now as he got bigger and bigger and bigger what began to fall was his love and in uh, management uh how to be a manager 102 which is not even out yet, but it's going to be out. So look out for it. I'm not sure when you're watching this, but I, there's a whole section in there about being married to the game and how the business has to come before any love and relationships. Now in the movie Dream Girl, that paints that makes him a really bad person because you know it, he's choosing business over love. He's choosing you know music over love, and you know how long a person decides to do that is up to them and their careers and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But because of that, he falls out when his relationship falls apart. And it's down to third, but he built an empire. And if you're trying to build an empire with your artists and at some point in the future, you want to stop and say it's time to have a family and this, that, and the third, then by all means, that's your thing. But this movie is a great example of the mentality, the fortitude, the focus, the business ethics, and everything that's needed to be successful as a manager in the game prior to going off and starting your own company. Because there are a lot of managers that went off and started their own company. You know, if I'm staying relevant right now, QC, both of those guys were managers. P and Coach K were managers. If you look at uh, TDE, Anthony, he was a producer, but when he went out there and started breaking Kendrick Lamar, he had to take on a lot of management responsibilities. Uh, when you go back and look at, you know, Birdman with Cash Money, or you look at Diddy, or you look at um, uh, uh, Percy Miller with No Limit, or you look at Irv Gotti, these guys started off on the ground first. You know, yeah, Biggie was managed by Mark Pitts, but Diddy was there at the beginning. He was on the ground. You know, you start off on the ground, right there in the dirt, and you're doing managerial activities. If you want to be an executive, you're going to start off doing managerial activities to build yourself up to where you want to be. That's just how it goes. And I believe that, that movie did a great job of showcasing what that looks like. Number three. Jersey Boys. Yo, Jersey Boys is one of the newer ones. It's the newest m film on my list, and it was a great film. It was slept on. You know, Quentin Tarantino, not Quentin Tarantino. Ah, shoot. Uh, cowboy guy. I can't remember his name right now. But um, he did a great job putting this together. Great job keeping the... the theatrical like the the theater side with the the film side and merging it together and really making it do its thing you know if you know anything about jersey boys that is a play it's like a broadway play it's a very big musical um it's not a play it's a musical it's a big musical uh and they did a great job of bringing it to life uh in a story mode now in reference to jersey boys what do you pay attention to as a manager well as a manager the lead uh, the lead, he wasn't the lead singer, he was the organizer, if you will, the captain of the group is acting as the manager. He's going out hustling, trying to find money. He's trying to figure out the group's name. He's trying to recruit members. He's bringing people on. He's, he's, he's curating events. He's making things happen. Like this guy here, he's doing all sorts of black market things to bring money into the organization, to keep promoting the records, to promote the group. He's sending demos out like, like the guy is out there hustling. He's doing everything you need to do as a manager. And I really feel like that movie go, ranks above Dreamgirls because they used, they used language that is true to the music industry. They're talking about mechanicals. They're talking about publishing. They're talking about royalties. They're talking about these things straight up and down. There's a scene where the manager or the you know managerial figure within the group is doing business with a new writer that they're bringing on to the group, and they're having a very intricate uh, exchange of knowledge in reference to how they're going to negotiate their deal going forward. Now, one thing to note is that the manager was not as smart as the songwriter that he was bringing on. 
that creates a lot of drama and dilemma. And as I told you guys before, when you're choosing a manager, knowledge, network, money, you gotta, you gotta figure these things out and a manager has to constantly uh, keep growing. But the story unravels and things happen because of this lack of knowledge and this lack of experience and this lack of other different things. And it just really showcases you know, what the story can be. You, you really, uh, what a story can be like and how situations play in real life. Um, I also think the loyalty is amazing. The loyalty that the lead singer has for that managerial figure is amazing. That really shows you the bond, relationship, the family type atmosphere you have to have to win. Hopefully, you don't do it under, you know, it doesn't end in negative circumstances, but that's the type of team effort and feeling and emotion that you want to build with your brothers, your sister, your family. Because as a manager, you are, you're not just a label executive that's working from a distance. You're there every day. You know the artist's mama, you know their, you know their dad, if their dad is present, if their mom is present, if they're alive, etc. You know their family, you know who they grew up with, you know their friends, their friends know you. Like, it's that type of scenario. Right. And I think that movie did a great job of displaying that. Plus, they had a lot of great language um, that you can pause and rewind and watch over and over and over again and try to, you know, and learn the business and see what they're talking about and why it's impactful and what's important. So Jersey Boys is my number three. Number two, number two is going to be The Five Heartbeats. Oh my gosh, The Five Heartbeats is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, the Five Heartbeats is an amazing movie for a manager because you actually get to see the story of a manager. You see the groups, you know, performing and trying to get on and trying to figure these things out. You see a manager sitting in the audience and he's trying to find his next act or maybe he's just going to enjoy a show. He's relaxing. He's enjoying his life. And boom, he sees an opportunity. He sees an opportunity and he finds it and he goes, ooh, it's time. And he grabs the group and he says, hey, he, met, he gives them a proposition. He says, look. You know, if you guys don't win the next talent show, I'll pay the money. My, if you work with me and you don't win the next talent show, I'll pay the money myself. Come work with me. Let me be your manager. Aggressive, aggressive trying to get that talent and make that talent uh, rock with him and, and get their loyalty and build that relationship. And he was a father figure a lot of times to the group. Uh, a lot of times in, in, in a managerial uh, scenario, uh, you'll find yourself older than the artist that you represent. All the other films that I've stated before this outside of Selena um, is, you know, they're about the same age. They're all, you know, kind of figuring it out together. But in this particular film, you're at a scenario where the manager is older than the artist and he has a different experience, he has a different outlook, he has a different responsibility, he's a father figure for these guys. He brings on a choreographer. He has experience in the game. We talk about these things when you're looking for a manager, what to look for. He already has experience in the game. He knows choreographers. He knows people that, he knows the promoters that do the talent shows, that do the, that do the different shows. He knows the people at, uh, at radio already. He knows the record label guy and the publisher that they end up signing a deal with later. He negotiates the deal with the publisher because he's been doing it before. His wife comes in and says, hey, you sure this group has it? You said this group had it. You said that group had it. You said that group had it. He tried and failed. He tried and failed. He tried and failed. He tried and failed. He tried and failed and he finally won with this group. All those other failures were his examples, his lessons, his relationship building and prepared him for the group that was going to change his life. All the topics that we talk about really come together well in this movie it's almost undeniable it was it was hard not to make this number one it's so freaking good at the same time you also see the power dynamics i talk about you see how vices come in play and how they can take control of situations you see how sex comes into play how it can take over situations you see how muscle comes into play and takes over situations all the power dynamics i talked about before you see them and you see everything that i've been talking about present in this film is something that you should watch over and over and over again. And that time when when the manager's in the room with Big Red and then negotiating the record deal, you gotta listen. You gotta listen to these things. You gotta pay attention. That is a great movie. That is a great movie from top to bottom. You guys have got to watch that over and over and over again. Soak up the game. And if you're the manager, study that guy because uh, I think he was a, a great example of what a manager is supposed to be from getting his boys ready, getting them in the mirrors, getting them practicing, getting them working together, teaching them how to be a better group, handling the business, making things happen. I mean, what else you want out of a movie? Huh? But if you want to be a music manager, there's only one movie in the world that I've ever seen, that I've ever come across that is better than that example. And that's going to be number one. Number one. Number one. Idol Maker. The Idol. This may be the hardest movie to get 
when I tell you guys you have to watch this movie, Amazon may not have it readily available. You might have to order the DVD or some shit like that. I know I got it. I, I keep it on my on my on my drive. It's in my Google Drive. You know, I would share it with y'all, but I think there's too many of you guys and I'll mess around and end up in a lawsuit over it. But I'm telling you guys, that movie is the best movie. Why? Because the whole movie is about a manager. Every other story I told you, it's about the group or it's about the star act, it's about the artist and the manager, you're seeing pieces of the manager's role throughout the film. No, 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 no. Idolmaker is about the manager, the whole movie. The manager is the star, the manager's life, what he goes through with the artist, how he works with the artist, what he has to do, you know, who he's dealing with, the whole process. It is, it is management gold. If you want to know how to be a manager, if it was how to be a manager one-on-one, the movie, Idol maker. You see it, he, he breaks two artists, not one, two. They show you how to break two different artists in one movie. It's amazing. He's aggressive. He's about his shit. He has experience. He's a talker. He goes and gets the money. I don't want to tell you guys a story because a lot of you guys haven't seen this. He finds a way to get the money. He finds, he, he's out there on the road. He's with the artists. He's, he's doing the payola stuff that he got to do to make things happen. He's working with the DJs. He's networking. He gets, he gets with press. You know, he does his different things. There's sex dynamics. There's power dynamics. There's muscle dynamics. All the different things I talked about. They're in there. CEO mentality, the whole thing. Everything you need to be a manager is in that movie. Idolmaker is number one. It's the best movie about music management ever created. And I'm stupid excited because I heard they're trying to redo the movie with Ryan Gosling. And if they make the movie anything close to as good as the first one, then we're going to have another classic on our hands. But that first one is undeniable. The music is great. Storyline is great. The whole process is great. It is undeniable. You have to watch The Idol Maker if you want to know how to be a music manager. From getting in the mirrors with the artist to dealing with multiple artists. Multiple artists having egos against one another. I talk about that in the info pack. We talk about all these things. Now, in How to Be a Music Manager 101, I break all of this stuff down. I hope you guys go check that out. I want to also leave you with a couple other films. This video has been hella long, but it's been hella real, and I want you guys to watch it. So a couple other films to note that you guys should watch. NWA was a great one. Um, it's not, it didn't make my list, but it was a great job. They showed some business, especially with Ice Cube um, trying to leave the group. Why him going to Priority Records? You know, Easy E getting out the contract, and you know what that was like getting Dre out of that contract. Easy E doing business with Jerry Heller. That whole thing. NWA was just a great movie altogether. One of the best uh, music movies I think I've ever seen as far as how well it was put together outside of business and everything like that. I think that and Ray were probably just amazing. And maybe, uh, I forgot the other one with the journalist. Really, really good. Um, outside of that, another good movie. I didn't mention this one because it was a series with New Edition. New Edition was great. They really showed you different managers on the path. Their first manager was a creative that cared about them, helped them become stars, but didn't know the business. The second manager knew the business, but was cheating them out of the business. You know, uh, the, the third manager, was a member from the group that learned the business and made sure that it never happened to him again. You even had, you know, the guy before everything popped off that came in from a production deal. Like the whole thing was great from a business perspective. They really broke the whole thing down, but it was a series. If it wasn't a series and it was one film, I probably would have made that number three. It was really a great, solid opportunity to take a look at the business. I suggest you guys check that out. It was the new edition story. It was done by BET. Another good one was TLC. They actually put the TLC biopic, they actually put the numbers on the screen and showed you. We made this amount, taxes were taken out, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this is how we went broke. Um, they don't have a lot of business throughout the film, but they do have that one scene which is worth watching in context of the film, notable. Next, Crush Groove. Crush Groove was a great film. It shows the growth of Rush Management, which is Russell Simmons' management company, with the growth of Def Jam, with him, with Russell and Rick Rubin, and how they built that company and what they were able to do. Rush Management was uh, Russell Simmons and Leo Cohen, who is now an executive over at YouTube, was, you know, everyone knows who he is at this point if you're dealing with music. But that's kind of where he started off, and it kind of showcases what management looked like and how they built and broke a company. Um, it's, you know, they got LL Cool J in it, Sheila E, Run DMC, uh, Fat Boys, all sorts of other different characters that are showing up and making appearances and cameos throughout the movie. Very low budget, very independent, but a great example of how business is done from the ground up, you know, guerrilla marketing, creating awareness and different things of that nature. So those are the notables. Listen, I don't know everything. 
It's a long video. I'm not going to keep talking. If you want to know more, go to www.phasevi.com. Check out some of the content uh, that I have out there available for you guys. I suggest um, that you get the, uh, the How to Be a Music Manager 101. I'm, I'm, I'm dropping that at the end of all these videos because these videos are about management and I created that for management because I went into detail and really went in giving y'all the game and giving y'all the business because I got a lot of questions and I wanted to make sure I got a lot of answers out there and I wanted to put it in a context that could allow you to grow and build and learn and move forward and prosper. So I suggest you get it. I suggest, you know, you just do your thug fizzle and learn the game. You know, like, subscribe, share, DM this to people, you know, post it, do whatever you want to do. Uh, subscribe, 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 tell other people about me. I'm excited to be doing this. I want to see everybody win. This was long. Hopefully you watch the whole thing. Uh, www.phasevi.com. I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little and a little bit about a lot. I'm trying to give you guys everything that I got every time I get in front of this camera. So stay focused. Beam in. Beam in. It's phase six. Uh, it's my last video for the night. About to get some wine. Is it like three in the morning? Yeah, I'm done with y'all.